Good afternoon, everybody. We're so excited to welcome you all here today to the Blavatnik School of Government. Uh, you know, it's such a wonderful space, as Callum was saying earlier, and for each of us to be able to come here and learn every day is, is such a remarkable opportunity. Throughout the course of the day, you're going to hear one common theme over and over again, and that's that the thing that makes this building so special is the people here. Uh, we are a class of 117 students representing 55 different countries, which is absolutely remarkable to have so much diversity in a class of different national backgrounds and of different experiences. And what's wonderful as a student here is you get to talk with your peers and hear what inspired them to get involved in public policy, what inspired them to pursue public service. I've been asked to share my story today on what set me on this journey. Uh, and my story starts with my younger brother, Dylan. Uh, Dylan is 23 years old. He loves potato chips. He swims like a fish. He loves Barney the dinosaur. Uh, he's also nonverbal autistic, has a severe developmental delay, and has epilepsy, which over the course of our lives has, has presented a lot of challenges for my family. There's two stories that I often like to share when I, when I talk about my brother. The first one's a bit more lighthearted, the second one less so, but I'll share them with you now. A few years ago, I was out and I, I decided I would take my brother uh, out, uh, out swimming. We, uh, we have a, a cottage in Canada that we go and visit every weekend and my brother loves to go and spend time on the boat. And so I had him in the car, he was in the back seat, I was driving. And I'm driving along and all of a sudden I, I look in the rear view mirror and I see all the cars swerving behind us. And I think, what in the world is going on? And I look to see, are there any potholes in front of us? Nothing like that. And all of a sudden I hear this little giggle behind me. And I turn around and look and there's my brother and he's reaching into my dad's tennis bag, lobbing tennis balls out the window like miniature grenades and they're bouncing along the road and all the cars are swerving and next thing you know I see him reaching for the tennis racket and that's about to go out the window too so in hindsight I laugh about it at the time a little bit stressful when you're behind the wheel and and what this story goes to show you is that for families like mine having a a member of the family with special needs is really a 24 7 job uh, you have to be there to help them eat, help them get juice, help them watch a movie, all those different things that can really end up being quite tiring for a, for a family uh, over the years. The second story is uh, kind of about a crisis point that, uh, that we reached. Um, my brother, when he entered his teen years, like a lot of individuals uh, with autism, uh, started having a lot of severe behavior issues. Uh, he was uh, throwing tantrums a lot, and so he was either having the behavior issues or he was constantly having seizures. He was being sent home from school every day. And the doctors were telling us that my brother needed to be placed in a special home where he could have the 24 seven care that he needed to monitor his medications, et cetera. Unfortunately, we weren't getting the support from the government that we needed to make that happen for my brother. And I remember one night I was sitting in my room and uh, doing my homework I swear, and uh, all of a sudden, I heard this crash, and my, I looked over and there was a foot sticking out of my wall. My brother had, had kicked a hole through his bedroom wall into my room during a, during a tantrum. And I often say that that was the moment when I realized I want to get involved in public policy. I want to make a difference. The walls were literally coming down around me, uh, and I, I decided that enough was enough. We needed a government in, in Canada that would provide greater support to families like mine so that we didn't end up in such a bad situation. Uh, so I ended up getting involved in politics. That was the route I chose to, to make a difference. I started working as a political advisor to our former finance minister in Canada, who himself had a son with special needs, and worked as his disabilities advisor for six years, uh, where I'm proud to announce last year uh, Canada launched a group to uh, plan out a national autism strategy, which is uh, really, really wonderful news. Uh, now, last year, as, as you may have heard, we got a new prime minister. He's got curly hair. He's pretty popular. He does mic drops occasionally. And so I suddenly found myself as a political refugee and decided that this was the perfect opportunity to come over here to England 
and learn more about how I can help families like mine. And just as I talked about the diversity in our class, that's been one of the key aspects of this learning experience for me. I've been able to talk with students from Australia about some of the great work that they're doing there to help individuals on the spectrum. Friends in Norway, friends in Sweden, friends here in the UK, and learn more skills that I will be able to bring back home to Canada and hopefully help more families like mine. My plan after the MPP is to go back to Canada and, uh, and take the jump myself and run for politics in, in 2018 and uh, hopefully make a difference for my brother. Uh, so we're so pleased to have you here today. You're gonna be hearing a lot of interesting stories like this. Uh, my friend Cornelia is gonna share her story next. And what I really hope is that at the end of today, you leave here feeling as inspired as I do every single day. This is a wonderful center of learning and we're so pleased to have you here to share this wonderful, wonderful day. Thank you very much.